Hello, everyone. My name is Jordan Smith, and I am the voice and the astrologer behind the YouTube channel Nonconformist Conscience and also the webpage. This week, we have a really active Venus, and I want to talk about her and the aspects or conversations that she's making to other planets, along with some of the other transits that are occurring you know, next week is when the eclipse happens. And so it's this portal of time for evolution and the moon will be in Libra. And so, you know, there Venus will be the ruler of that moon. And it's really important to talk about what is going on this week astrologically as we gear up for eclipse season. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit about Venus and Gemini. Venus ingressed into the sign of Gemini on Monday, the 10th of April. And we know that Venus is naturally co-ruled by Taurus and Libra. And so Venus really is about our relationship to self and the ability to listen to the inner voice. And it's also, um, if we're looking at it expressed outwardly through Libra, our relationship with others and the ability to listen to others in an equanimity equanimous way oh that's a tongue qu twister um and the ability to listen to where they're coming from as opposed to where we think that they're coming from and so this is just kind of a generalization but we want to keep this in mind with venus it is you know learning about how we inwardly relate what our values are what our needs are if it's taurus it's about learning how to be self-sufficient about creating self-esteem and all of that is done through really being able to ground and simplify and listen to the inner voice so with venus and the sign of gemini it's really experiential <laughs> venus and the sign of gemini wants to intellectualize and wants to learn and wants to, you know, Gemini is a masculine energy. It wants to exert itself outward as a way to collect data and the need to assimilate that information. And so Venus and Gemini right now is really wanting all of us to learn about what our needs are, what our values are. Venus and Gemini wants us to have these experiences and there's this call to listen to the inner voice and what the direction is and where that's stemming from within so we can utilize and make choices as to how to go about collecting more information. With Venus being ruled by Mercury in the sign of Taurus, though, there is a need to really, there's the emphasis on listening to the inner voice and really a simplification of the information. So with Venus in the sign of Gemini, a lot of us can be having these experiences of wanting to have experiences, like really feeling, I want to do this, I want to do that. And that's because there's this soul yearning to understand ourselves more deeply. And the key with Venus and Gemini is because Venus and Gemini really wants us to expand upon our, our knowledge, there's a need to really listen to the inner voice of when to go out into the world and then to constrict or retreat and come back in in order to assimilate that information that we've just garnered or taken in. And so the key also is to not overextend ourselves and get our answers that we're searching for met by others. There's this really big call with Venus and Gemini's ruler 
Mercury being in Taurus to be able to listen to the inner voice so that way we can answer these questions for ourselves so that way we know which direction, which choice to make in regard to our evolutionary growth. So <clears throat> that's a little bit about Venus and Gemini. Yesterday on the 11th, we had Jupiter and the sun conjoin in the sky in the sign of Aries. A lot of astrologers call the Jupiter sun conjunction the luckiest day of the year where you can really experience a windfall. And with Jupiter conjunct the sun in the sign of Aries, it's ruled by Mars, who is in the sign of Cancer right now. And so we can see that what this windfall that is occurring this week can be about. Jupiter, and it, and it has to deal with the, the emotional body. So Jupiter is like the bearer of gifts, but it's like you've got to, you got to release something in order to get something with Jupiter. And so with Jupiter and the sun and Aries being ruled by Mars and the sign of Cancer, this is really a call to dive into the emotional body and to explore our emotions further. So Mars is still trying the South Node and also trying Saturn and Pisces. And with Mars and Cancer trying the South Node being ruled by Pluto in Aquarius, which is also trying Venus in Gemini, this really speaks to the call to act and have courage to dive into the emotional body and to understand where our conditioning around how we get our needs met comes from, what constitutes emotional security for each one of us on a personal level. With the south node of Scorpio being ruled by Pluto and Aquarius, there's this need to really be objective about our emotions as they are surfacing so that way we can really challenge our inner status quo about our psychological and emotional motivations behind getting our needs met and to really liberate from anything that is of a conditioning factor that's not healthy for us. There are oftentimes a lot of people how they go about getting their needs met is through manipulation, which is a Scorpio function. And it's because they've been conditioned to get their needs met that way. So there's this call to really observe how we tend to get our emotional needs met and how we emotionally validate ourselves. Are we externalizing it from others or are we able to do that? And so there's this big call to really understand what our emotions are. With, with doing this, this isn't a disseminating trine. So it's like just the action of being willing to courageously look at our emotional dynamics and where things stem from. Information can really be imparted onto each one of us and into each one of us that helps us understand our emotions further. The south node is also in a trine to Saturn and Pisces, which is also trine Mars and Cancer. And the Saturn trine to the south node is in a disseminating trine as well. So it's this ability to really look at conditioning. Saturn is also our conditioning. And the need to dissolve old structures, old crystallizations of what our values, what our needs are, how we've gotten them met in the past, where we've experienced illusions or delusions pertaining to our conditioning, and having the willingness to look at this, that information about where it comes from, why we are the way we are, and getting to the bottom of it can come in 
And that wisdom really gets imparted into us so that way we can liberate from it and have a transformation. And we can also transcend this. With Mars and Saturn in a trine, they are in a first quarter trine. So for some people, you know, this is an evolutionary standstill. There is a resistance to acting on the desires to explore the emotions further as a way to dissolve those and as a way to create new structures. So for those who are having a hard time really tapping into their emotions, lean into the curve of the astrology of really going into the body. There is a lot of Taurus energy happening with Uranus, Mercury, and the North Node all being in Taurus. And Taurus is about our feeling nature. So it's really cool to think about how while Jupiter and the Sun are conjunct, ruled by Mars and Cancer, this is happening while Venus in Gemini is trine Pluto and Aquarius. So it's like the universe is saying that if we explore this, if we have curiosity like Gemini and we act on the desires to explore our emotions, we then get to have new desires emanate out that help us to further explore our emotions, our emotional body, why we are the way we are. And we get to liberate from old thinking, Venus, Trine, Pluto, and Aquarius, old thinking revolving around our conditioning of how we relate inwardly and how we relate to others. And so there's this intellectual component that comes into place. But Venus is ruled by Mercury and Taurus. So for those who are experiencing a hard time with exploring their emotions, Venus being ruled by Mercury really says tap into your feeling nature. Really ground yourself in the experience of the senses of what's occurring internally within and get curious about it. So this can look like, oh my gosh, I feel very, very, um, my tummy is turning. I feel really nervous. I feel anxiety. So it's, I feel, I feel, I feel, and it's dealing with the body. So if you can do the Mercury and Taurus thing and tap into that, then you can do the Venus, which it's in mutual reception with this Mercury, and be curious, what is this about? And through that, our feelings are a segue to our emotional body. We can intellectualize our feelings for sure, but it's this gateway into understanding and being able to dive deeper into the emotions. So I'm feeling nervous energy. Maybe my stomach is feeling like it's in knots or I have butterflies. And so I can ground myself in and experience the inertia of not knowing how to communicate or express what I'm feeling Mercury and Taurus. And so there's a need to really ground and root into oneself in a very Taurus way, and then to get curious about that. And because Venus and Mercury are in mutual reception, there's a lot of knowledge that can be imparted about where these feelings come from. So once you dive into that, you can then ask yourself, how old do I feel? When did I experience this last? And what was going on at that time in my life? And when we do that, that is like this key to unlocking the emotional body. Instead of just having an instinctual feeling about something, we can play detective. And this is that Mars trining the South Node and Scorpio. And we can play detective about our feelings that really help us experience emotions. And for some, this can be an emotional release of connecting dots and having aha moments about these certain things 
as a way to really be able to swim in the ocean of our emotions. That way we can continue this evolutionary journey that we're all being asked to have at this moment. You know, Uranus is in Taurus right now, and it is the ruler of Pluto, which is trine Venus and Gemini. And Uranus is ruled by this Venus and Gemini. So a lot of people can be being triggered right now through conversations, words can actually be very triggering for people with Venus in the sign of Gemini. And they can experience inertia, a feeling thrown back in on themselves. And it can be a trauma response with Uranus being in Taurus. And so there's a need to be objective about what one is feeling. So that way we can get to the root of what is occurring and the emotions that need to be explored. <clears throat> and this will definitely pertain to trauma and to our conditioning and the trauma that has occurred because of our conditioning. So, you know, this runs the gamut in ways that it can show up for each one of us individually. But with Venus being in Gemini, there's just this call to really be curious about what one is feeling and experiencing, especially with Venus and Mercury and mutual reception of each other right now. So back to the Sun-Jupiter conjunction happening, being ruled by this Mars while it's in a grand trine and also the ruler of the South Node that Mars is in a grand trine with is Pluto, which is in a trine with Venus and Gemini. This is a very profound time to to learn about oneself very deeply on an emotional level. The key is to really listen to when one needs to retreat and constrict and ground within so that the information can be assimilated. If you're just out there going and going and going and going, that really can't happen. There's not a lot of integration that can happen with the astrology that's going on. And it can also be used as a way to resist dealing with our emotions that are wanting to surface right now. So with Jupiter here in a conjunction being ruled by Mars, it's also in a trine to Mars's south node in the sign of Sagittarius. So it is ruled by this Jupiter conjunct the sun and it's retrograde. So there's something we're resolving about our emotional dynamics. And if you are really objectifying and diving into the emotions and really looking and being discerning about where they come from as a way to really liberate from the conditioning. That south node of Mars that's retrograde is giving us all an opportunity to resolve. Resolve what? With it being ruled by Jupiter conjunct the sun? Resolve? It's a resolution of understanding how to experience our emotions on a more nat in a more natural way instead of a suppressed way stemming from conditioning the suppression of emotions stems from conditioning and so there is this windfall that can happen this week for those who are willing and have the courage to explore their emotions they can really learn deep emotional truths south note of mars in Sag, ruled by that sun, deep emotional truths about oneself that help them to be able to emotionally validate themselves and then gain inner security. Beautiful week leading up to this eclipse next week. So later on in the week, um, we have Saturn and Pisces in a trine with the South Node in Scorpio and a sextile with the North Node. And this is happening in perfection today on the 12th, Wednesday, April 12th. And this really symbolizes 
this time period of being able to understand and get to the bottom of our conditioning, Saturn trying that south node, and being able, if we're willing to explore our emotional dynamics, really being able to dissolve the things that are not true, the, the beliefs that are not true that we've bought into and understanding why we bought into them and where that conditioning took place and the liberation that can occur. And that Saturn trining the South Node is in this disseminating trine. So it's like just having the willingness to explore this, that information can be easily able to be accessed by us. And it's like divine wisdom that's imparted on us that it has us understanding our natural truths revolving around our conditioning and then being able to create new foundations and the sextile from Saturn to the North node is in a crescent phase sextile, meaning that what we learn about this inner exploration can easily be integrated and it revolves around how we inwardly relate. So this is an opportunity to really learn about oneself in a more natural way and to really implement new values and in new needs and to be able to be self-secure within doing that if we have the willingness to do that. So <clears throat> when we do do that, because the North Node is ruled by this Venus and Gemini, more questions will pop up. They'll surface for us to explore deeper. Later on in the week, this is happening on Friday, Venus will square Saturn and it's in a first quarter square. So this is very much a call to act, to act on what, to ask yourself these questions, to make choices regarding which way to go in order to explore. How can you apply new values in a way that's beneficial? Venus in Gemini is very exper experiential. Venus and Gemini wants us to have experiences. It wants action in order to have experiences to be able to take in the information from those experiences. It's an immutable sign. That's very much what a mutable sign wants. It wants expansion. But then there needs to be constriction at a certain point in order to assimilate that information. And so this is a day where one can also really understand you know, uh, where feelings in the body are residing, being able to ground in that, being able to explore where that comes from, being able to dissolve some of the illusions revolving around our conditioning that's affected how we feel things in the body, understanding that there are natural truths revolving around our emotions and the way that we can express them and Venus and Gemini wants us to learn how to express them in a way that's healthy. And this Saturn-Venus square to me is really this indicative nature of, it's why I titled this, the onus of our emotional intelligence. Onus is such a Saturn-Capricorn word, meaning to take responsibility. And Venus in Gemini, with everything that's going on right now, astrologically wants us to become more emotionally intelligent so that way we can inwardly relate in a radically different way. Venus being the ruler of Uranus and that North Node. And so there's this call this week to really take responsibility for our own emotional intelligence to really be honest with oneself and authentic with how we're feeling. This is also that Sun-Jupiter conjunction that's trining the South Node of Mars and being ruled by Jupiter and then also transiting Jupiter being ruled by Mars and Cancer. And so there's this deep need to take responsibility for one's emotional dynamics and emotional maturity and emotional intelligence. We want to have higher emotional intelligence, an EQ that is higher, 
that way it's like putting tools in a toolbox and being able to, oh, I'm feeling this. And then when I'm feeling something, I know that I need to explore this. And so it's like understanding how to, how to emotionally validate oneself in a linear way by having like a formula and that's this week is really learning about what formula or what do you need to gain emotionally through your emotional intelligence to learn how to self-validate how to become self-sufficient self-secure have a better self-esteem all of this is floating around this week and the only way to do it is to really listen to the inner voice dive into the emotional body, be an explorer of your own emotions and the ocean of your emotions, feel things in order to heal them, and to really look at and explore where the conditioning comes from. And this is also exploring beliefs that have been conditioned upon us that have affected us emotionally and created distortions within. That also goes back to this Jupiter trine Mars is south node and Jupiter being ruled by Mars and Cancer. So it's really wanting to reveal these natural truths. And there's a need to ground within our feeling nature and to be able to simplify things in a way that we can grasp and understand. That way we can obtain this emotional validation and not have to externalize from others. So Venus and Gemini, people who have this or have a Venus in the third house have really been gathering information for lifetimes and are needing to throw off that external voices. And so with this transit, it is really important to listen to the inner voice of when to expand upon the knowledge and when to have restriction and to go back within with its ruler Mercury and Taurus, it is a deep need. If we are to assimilate the information we are learning, there's a need to have simplification and not to overwhelm the system with voices of others and people's opinions. You know, with Venus also trying Pluto, Venus being in Gemini, this is a really good time to be able to understand the difference between opinion and fact or truth and opinion and this means that we're looking at projections so it's if you're not doing this internal work of looking at your emotions and the feelings that are tied to the emotional body there can be a higher degree of projection being projected onto because we can't hold good boundaries or a higher degree of us projecting our past traumas onto people and thinking that it's the truth when in reality it's not. And this is a week to really be able to understand this fully or more fully if we are willing to really emotionally dive in and a tool you can use is with Venus being ruled by Mercury here in Taurus is really being able to ground within the feelings, understanding what is occurring within the body, and then being able to explore what emotional dynamics that's tied to. That is this astrology for this week. Later on, on Sunday, the south node will in conjunct Venus. And so this can be where people are resisting exploring their psychological and emotional dynamics. And an external event can be triggered to serve as a catalyst to readjust and realign one back into really wanting to get to the bottom of their emotional and psychological nature. That stems from the conditioning with the south node being ruled by Pluto. And so... Venus in conjunct the south node is saying, get curious, have a little explora exploration. Like, could it be scary with the south node's ruler being Pluto and Aquarius? Absolutely. But with that Pluto being ruled by Uranus and Taurus, 
it can radically transform the way that you do relationship with self by just having the willingness to be curious. Venus being an immutable sign, set an intention. Another great way to utilize this astrology with Venus and mutual reception with Mercury is if you are needing to dive into your emotional body to get into get to the bottom of your dynamics, this is a great time to start journaling. You need to be writing about what is coming up, what your feelings are, how you feel it in your body. When that was triggered, was it through a conversation? Did someone do something? Did you watch something? It's all of this external information that can really trigger a feeling that helps us explore and dive into the emotions. And just writing, Venus and Gemini is mutable. By just starting to write something or journal about it, Venus wants us to express it. And through expressing it, we then get to really explore deeper on a very personal level what this is, where it's coming from, and what emotions it's tied to. So these are the things I wanted to talk about this week. This is occurring, you know, like I said, right before the eclipse next week. And this eclipse, the moon will be ruled by Venus and Gemini. You want to be doing this work before this eclipse happens. You, This is a portal in time where we're at an evolutionary juncture that can really accelerate our evolutionary growth if you have the willingness in the, and make the conscious effort to do this the week before and continue on this journey. So if you're needing to express yourself, it doesn't matter if you are a writer or not. A journal is personal. It'll help you connect and explore the emotions and where they come from and the feelings that are tethered to them. And it'll help us all explore what conditioned us to think or believe or intellectualize certain things about ourselves and maybe why we're suppressing this really naturally occurring thing of being able to express our emotions. So I think that this week is beautiful. I think that we need to keep in mind that Pluto is still square these nodes while all of this is going on. And one other thing worth mentioning today, the 12th, Mars is going to be opposing its ruler, the moon. And the moon is ruled by Saturn and Pisces. So we can see that for a lot of people who've been suppressing moon and, and Capricorn, are experiencing the need to really dive into this emotional body and through doing that with Saturn ruling the moon they can really dissolve old dynamics pertaining to their conditioning as long as they have the willingness to explore it if you experience anger today that could be normal use that as a way to be objective about where does this come from Okay, someone said this and it pissed me off. Okay, but why did it piss me off? Start being more Venus and Gemini and ask, ask, ask. You get a why, ask another why. And then sit with it, write about it, journal about it, express it, explore it, be curious. And a wealth of information can come to you. Like I said, this week is really about the onus of our emotional intelligence, taking responsibility for that. And there is so much wisdom that we can have imparted on us this week if we just have the willingness to explore these dynamics. So I, th I hope everyone has a beautiful week and I will be back next week to talk about the eclipse and... If you want to know more about this week, I will include the link to the written report I did yesterday and just a link to my website if you're wanting to book and explore. So, um, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Have a great week and stay curious.